To begin with the beginning, um, I wanted to ask you how it all started and how, what was your epiphany? How, how did it begin? You know, actually, I, I started my own practice in Salzburg and after a few years working in Salzburg, I started to work to open the office with Francisco Ullmann in Vienna. Uh, she was, I mean, everybody here has his own independent office already before, so it's not like that we started from, some, from zero. It's like we, we jump into a, in a, a cooperation uh, to work together on several projects. So after Francesca, um, like five, six years ago, I was in, uh, or we was in Mexico City for a lecture for a symposium on urban planning and housing. I got introduced to Javier, and Javier, uh, he's also, he's an architect and a developer, and he invited me to do a first project with him together where he is developer and so the cooperation with Javi was starting and we were becoming friends and like uh, at this time Peter Rebner and friends didn't exist it was like always independent offices and after it was like uh, with Gianluca and Claudio and we, we won competitions in Italy and, uh, and with Michael Schwartz we won a comp big competitions in the United Arab Emirates so everything started like just an accident and so we figured out um, by winning like 15 international competitions in the last four years that we have to find a different structure to work together. And I'm not interested so much into partnership, it's really friendship. Uh, that's the reason why I call it Peter Rappner and Friends, but it's actually always independent offices. So there's an office together with Francisca, there's an office together with Javier, with Michael, with uh, Gianluca and Claudio. So it's an open, flexible structure, because I don't believe in these old-fashioned structures, business structure, business uh, cases. I also, I'm not only trained as an architect, I'm also trained as a, uh, a business. Uh, so it's like, um, uh, that's the reason why I found a new system, especially after working in LA, uh, seeing so many famous architects there, seeing that they're nearly bankrupt, you have to find different new ways to work together. That's fascinating. So it's the idea basically of inventing an office which is no more like a continent, kind of, but it's more archipelago mm -hmm. or smaller. Because Edouard Glissant says the 21st century it's over with the big continents. We have more archipelagos, so it's more islands than a big continent. Yeah, it's islands and it's like, but also like they are friends, you know, it's not like that I'm only the friend with somebody. They are all friends together. So it's like, it's, it was becoming over time like a sort of family working together and uh, that's it. So Francesca is based in Vienna, I'm in Munich, Javier in Mexico, Michael in Ajman, and uh, they are in Rome, and Michael Eichner who is missing in Moscow. And so, so we are all working together. Does anybody else want to say something about this new form of collaboration? Because it's very interesting, you, you don't, you're not a group, you're not a movement. And it's interesting because if one looks at the avant-garde of the 20th century, um, in the early 20th century, you have manifestos, then you have the neo avant garde of the 60s, um, again, manifestos. In our time, the situation is maybe more atomized. Uh, so you're not a movement with a manifesto, I suppose. I would suppose you don't have a manifesto, or do you? You ask me or you ask the other All ones? of you. <laughs> all questions are to all of you. You want to? I don't, I don't think we have a manifesto. So I think we are, we are very flexible somehow, and uh, so we can react to different developments worldwide, because our offices are worldwide. And I think a big advantage of us is that all of us, we are teaching in universities as well, uh, which gives us a kind of a freedom with our offices and with our uh, friendship we have. So uh, I think this is not to be underestimated, because everyone knows who's just working in the office, who just has the office, what the pressure is about it. And so we are not only free in, in working together, we are free as well in thinking. And this is very important for all of us, I think, right? Yeah, it's something, I mean, because of university, we can do a lot of research. And this is, uh, you know, research in architecture is not so often happen. Most of the time it's a form research, but we are doing really research about people, how people use things and all this. It's a totally different type. We, we have like a, an uh, empathic system. No, no programmatic, empathic, because we are, we have similar uh, uh, horizons. No? It's uh, just a uh, look to to way life, uh, to way to look to architecture. In now, general. who are architects 
from the past who inspire you? Who are your heroes? <laughs> Why do you ask me ah, first? But maybe there's some here. <laughs> I mean, like Polchati. We we kill Scarpa. Idols. No? Some of the heroes. <laughs> For me, it's totally different. It was Sarinen, it was Paragon. That was the reason why I was going to, to Mexico first time to see the work of Paragon. You, know, you remember his Pritzker Prize speech where he was talking about the loss of beauty in architecture and the writing of architecture. So still I'm an Austrian-German. I'm not so much interested into, into technology solution at first, but it's like the this poetry, which is missing in architecture a lot, which you see here at the Biennale a lot. And uh, I went to Mexico and I found out that there is fantastic young, young uh, scene of architecture, which we don't all know. I mean, it's really incredible how, how we look from Europe to other countries or to continents. I think this is, this is somehow a little bit obvious in the Biennale this year. In general, in the Biennale, there's a kind of a, how should I say, when you're looking at these performances, when you're looking at the pavilions, there's a kind of an arrogance of the, let, let me call it, old world. Uh, that uh, the British, the Americans, the Japanese, the French, they are sitting together, they are discussing the issues, you know. But uh, where, where we have what you just had this morning, where we have really globalization, uh, which is India, for example, which is China, I think uh, nobody looks at them. And uh, this is, uh, I don't know how I came to it, but I think this is for me personally, it's a very cool attitude. And I'm, I'm surprised I see this at a Biennale this time. You know, for, for me, the it's like building bridges. It's like you have the opportunity of working on the other side of the world, but you feel that you're not in the other side of the world because you have uh, a partner and a friend who knows that part of the world. Uh, he lives there, no? So the exchange of experiences uh, that you have while you visit and while you live on the other side, you're working in a bridge situation, I think, uh, enables you to uh, really understand that you're uh, you have a possibility of working anywhere, no? sharing uh, or discussing with people that maybe see Mexico in a different way than the way I see Mexico. And when I go to uh, Europe, I see Europe in, in my own way. And, and confronting those visions, I think, creates a lot of interesting discussions. Yeah, it creates new, new, new architecture in a way. I new mean, thinking. it's like totally different approach to architecture we are discussing now.